and the single points. Okay. So here we got an, an and now we can um, select if this is selected and this cursor icon is selected, we can check every pixel here and we'll see the spectra in every pixel. What we're going to work with is the average version. And this is just to understand how the data set works. We can also uh, load every kind of uh, yeah, spatial imagery, hyperspectral imagery in here. We're going to do that later too. So here in the average version, we have like a, um, yeah, the early, early year, um, spectrum of wheat in 2015, and here it starts senescing already with the senescent one in late July of 2015, and then the new new year starts with 2017, and here's the 2019 data. Okay, I think, hope you get how the how the data works and looks. Sorry, Matthias, so, can, can, could you open again? How did you open the spectral signature? Uh, you have to activate uh, the, this button here. You have the images uh, in, in the MF box right now, don't you? OK, yes, thanks. Yes, you just click on it, and it should appear. Right. I have the same. I have the uh maps but not the spectra although i have those uh, the same color color you have uh, do you have that activated so if the, these two are activated it should work if not where uh, you can we can also uh yeah wait and i i just proceed because yeah normally in a in a in a <laughs> In a tutorial like this, I would like walk around in the room and show everybody how it works, but I think that it's not possible. So we proceed and I hope you understand anyway. As long as it's loaded, it's good. So we got our data, typical vegetation spectra, which are changing over time over, over the growing season. So we go back to the slides. So yeah, our typical vegetation spectrum with the pigment absorption in the visible, uh, the red edge, the yeah the first water absorption band, the second and the left out water vapor uh, absorptions where we don't see anything in reflectance there and there, and in the short wave infrared uh, more woody elements of vegetation, cellulose, lignin, and the senescent material. So uh, uh, it's nice to look at spectra, but what we actually want to do is like retrieve act actual parameters or variables from, from these spectra. So for example, we have the spectra, we want to know what is the LEI of it. On, and that's where like the re vegetation reflectance modeling, for example, comes into play. So we measure it with a satellite or by hand. And what we do is we use this, yeah, radiative transfer model process. For example, we might build up the lookup tables and set up machine learning regression algorithms to be trained on that. That's the hybrid scheme the Katya was presenting yesterday. And uh, what it does is actually finding a, a best fit to that spectrum. And the, uh, like a best fit would be found. And finally, we, we, we retrieve the LAI in the best case. And but also not, not only the LAI, but also the chlorophyll content, water content, and, and so on, all the, all the model parameters we have in the model. But we can also use our tool to retrieve that interactively by hand. So you will be the machine learning algorithm, more or less. And that's what we're going to do first. So we go back 
to the MMAP box. We go to applications, agricultural application, and start the interactive visualization of vegetation reflectance model. It was not my idea to call it a way, <laughs> but yeah, it's still fine. IVVIM, I'm going to call it. So that's already introducing that it's working with RTMs, and that is how it looks. Make it a bit smaller. Is that open for most of you guys? Please, please in chat only a, a plus sign or something that would be perfect. Nice, so many, that's, that's great. So uh, first of all, so we got, right now we see uh, already modeled spectrum by ProSale in the original re resolution. That means one nanometer resolution. Don't click on these right now because you, you will be able to change the spectral resolution by when the background, uh, the, the spectral response functions are used to convert the spectrum into NMAP, Sentinel, or Lancer. That's not working right now, but it's already on my machine, it works already. So it only has to be implemented in the, in the MMAP box. So we can select the leaf model of Prospect. So right now Prospect D version is selected. If we change to Prospect 4, a little bit changes in the spectrum. You see here in the use parameters that there's only water content, chlorophyll, and the mesophyll structure parameter. That was the first version with only three, four par uh, parameters. And, and yeah, and Prospect 5, keratin, keratin, Carotinoids were implemented. 5D got uh, brown pigments implemented. D got anthocyanins implemented. And now in the latest Prospect Pro versions, we got the proteins and the carbon-based constituents also. So right now we have the canopy model already activated, but we can also only look at the LEAP model, which changes the spectrum, of course. But we leave as we have canopy measurements, we leave it at the yeah, the, the canopy model. And we see how also LAI gets activated and all the other process parameters like the leaf angle, we can switch it to a ellipsoidal distribution, which means a, a mean angle. And we can also set like a, a yeah, a, a pre-designed leaf angle distribution. And also we got the hotspot size parameter, the observer senate angle, if we got the tilted acquisition, for example, which changes the spectrum a lot, and the sun senate angle and the azimuth angle. So and all. What was also implemented is just to say, we're not going to work with it, but we also have the inform model in here, which adds the inform parameters, undergrowth, LAI, stem density, tree height, and crown diameter. So, yeah, what's also in there is the brightness factor of the, I was talking about it yesterday uh, shortly, I think, who was asking that question, I don't remember, about soil background. Maurice. Uh, Maurice, genau, that was you. So right now in this version, there's a literature soil implemented. And if you lower the LAI, so you got more influence of the soil in the background. Uh, maybe I explain that first. If, every time you, you change those sliders, uh, the model runs actually. So it's, it's, Re, re recalculated every time and you see it here directly. So if you change the LRI, lower it down, you see how the background soil gets more influence. And with this brightness factor of the literate, literature soil, you can see like the, the lower makes it, yeah, it, it, it's a darker soil, which might be more, it, it, it is more moist, more water in there. so. It's a darker soil in the background or a very dry soil. 
And in this tool, you can also lower the, uh, your own soil spectrum, for example. But for uh, this is only working for one spectrum. So if you want to do any applications with it, you would have to check the code, which is publicly available. So we stay at a yeah, mean soil factor of 0 0.5. And we have all the parameters. We got prospect deactivated, the canopy model for sale. And what we're going to do now is we're going to load a spectrum from our measured data set. We can load a spectrum in there. Select input file. We're going to go here. You're going to go to your data, spectra. Single, uh, single spectra, and we're going to choose the number 12. That is quite nice to look at. It's the spectrum of 29th of May from 2017, like a very green wheat spectrum. So if the, this is OK, no errors. We can just click OK, OK again. We can exclude bands too if we want, but we won't, don't want that. We want to see the whole spectrum and there it is in gray. So what we can do now is uh, yeah, simulate manually what, uh, for example, a lookup table approach would do to find the best fit spectrum no. in the lookup table. Is uh, the spectrum Ma loaded? Matthias, yeah. can you show how you, can you uh, load the spectrum? You go to load in situ data. Then you select a file. You go to your data we gave you, MNE spectra, single spectra, and number 12 of 2017, OK? And that, then it's just OK, OK, OK. And there we have it. So plus in the plus in the chat if you have it. Nice. All right. So what, what we're gonna do now is we try to fit our modeled spectrum to the measured one, and that's what the yeah, machine learning algorithm learns how the model works, and it, it tries to fit the spectrum. And the lookup table approach will do that too. And we do it manually for one spectrum only. So the interesting thing about it, so I, I'd say we just, you, you're gonna, yeah, at first we're gonna increase the LAI because it's May. So a wheat spectrum of May might have a quite big LAI of about what are you? five to six. So this is way too high. So something something is wrong. So maybe the leaf angle is very sensible in that case. We maybe we're gonna increase it. So we're gonna see more of the um, yeah. It, it, the higher the leaf angle, the the less reflectance comes from the leaves itself, and the spectrum gets darker more or less. So and and now we maybe we got a bit too less chlorophyll in there because our green peak is much lower. So we're gonna increase the chlorophyll content and fit that. And you, you also got those metrics here. So you they tell you how good it is fitted right now. RMSE and so on. So then maybe the carotenoids uh, we might have to increase. So the green peak is well fitted. Also, this is commonly like a, a problem, the red edge shape. That's where the brown pigments kick in more or less. So we can maybe fit that a bit. Then the water content may be actually higher and so on. 
So um, I, I think it would be good to do if you just um, try to do it for uh, two minutes and and fit it by yourself. Yeah, I'm I'm just gonna wait two minutes and then I'm gonna ask you what your parameters are. Now right now you might have copied mine, which was actually not the idea, but I'm gonna tell you why. So I'm gonna wait a bit. Uh, just a quick question. I don't have yeah. an X and Y axis on my spectral plot. How do you activate that? Oh, that might have happened. Maybe there was an error in the, in the background of your of your version or some of the. Uh, it's a known problem, so don't be concerned. <laughs> it's gonna. It's hopefully gonna be resolved. All right. Thanks. It's still work in progress. Still, it's not. Uh, it's all not final. So, if you have any more bugs to report, please tell me. So, the idea right now, if I would uh, not have shown you what I actually adjusted here, it's also not uh, perfect, but it's uh, like my personal um, experience with the field data. I, I'd say, yeah, we got a, a bit of an off, offset here, but generally it's quite well fitted, it's, uh, particularly in the, in the shortwave infrared. So the idea would be now, if you would have done that all by yourself and I wouldn't sh have shown you anything, um, the idea is that all your results would probably be quite different. So if we look at the real data that you don't have, but I have all of it, of course. We see here for the 29th of May, we see a, a LAI of 5.8, which we fitted quite well. And the, the water content might, is a bit off, but it's okay. So we, we retrieved actual real world in situ measured parameters here, but you might have uh, adjusted way other things. And that's the problem with uh, radiative transfer modeling and inversion of radiative transfer models. So that's the equifinality problem or the ill post nature of it. So many different parameter sets might lead to the same spectrum and we don't actually know what, what is the right one. So this is now quite fine, but it, there might be other combinations that might lead to the same spectrum. So this is the actual exercise I wanted to show you. For example, you could have a very different sun angle actually, which is quite longer and, 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 and so on. So that is what makes the the, the retrieval difficult for lookup table approaches, but also for um, for machine learning approaches. And we can see that again, if we activate this accumulative plotting mode, and if we now um, yeah activate those sliders, we can see where those um, parameters have influence on the spectrum. And they, of course, they overlap uh, in almost every um, spectral range, except the pigments, but the pigments themselves, they overlap too. So the carotenoids in the, in the visible and the anthocyanins, they overlap which might come quite important now in autumn if you want to measure that and chlorophyll content, of course. So with all that, you can see the very, what, what Katya showed yesterday in the global sensitivity analysis that the sensitivity of all those parameters are overlapping and it's hard to separate them. 
leaf angle has a very strong influence on the whole spectrum, for example. All right. So this, these are all single runs of ProSale. Oops. There we go. Okay, so you understand that. And I go back to the slides. So th this is the perfect set. And now you know why it is not that easy to achieve this. And what we're going to do now is um, switch over to the water content retrieval. That's what we did right now, the IBVRM tool. And what we're going to do now is retrieve water content. So now first we're going to use this um, index toolbox we have. So I'm going to go back to the Nmap box. I'm going to close the IVVRM tool. Oops, there we are. And we go to applications and we go to the vegetation indices toolbox. And this should be open. So the as I said, uh, um, Miriam showed that yesterday some the, the list was from the NASA, I guess, with some uh, indices. And these are, it's like a collection where you, when you load your, your hyperspectral imagery, you can select any kind of um, indices that are, it's not, it's not complete. There might be others, but most of the most common ones are in there. So they have structural indices, chlorophyll indices, indices for carotenoids and anthocyanin, leaf water indices, dry matter, and even fluorescence indices. But we stay with the leaf water right now, and we're gonna, for our exercise now, we're gonna select the NDWI, that's the normalized difference water index and the plant water index. And we, as an input image, we go to our data and we select the average image that we loaded into the NMAP box already. So the new average one. Yes, I, as, as, I, as I said, the, the switching to other, um, to other sensors isn't working right now. It's working with the next update. So we're going to select our average image. We select an output image. We go to this pre pre created folder, the eyes. I did it already, but you can just call it MNI index. It's going to be overwritten. Doesn't matter. And the, the actual index will be put here as a, as a suffix. So we got an output, input image, output image, output no data value important. And if you have actual satellite data, it's, open, um, yeah, it's often um, integer based, so it's not comma values. You would have to uh, divide the input by 10,000, for example. But now in our data set, it's float values already, so we can keep that. We want single files. You can also, uh, also have a multi-band image with all the ind indices in there, which would be like a lot bands. And every band would be the actual index you calculated. So now this is set. And we calculate it, which is super fast, of course, because it's a small data set. It should be quite fast for imagery as well. So we got that saved and go to the location where we saved it. There we are. And we're going to take the BSQ file, which is the band sequential <coughs> imagery of our NWI index and our PWI index. 
So now we have an index calculated for uh, we have two indices calculated for our uh, spectra and we want to retrieve what's the content. So we're gonna also load some validation data. So we go to MNI variables. And what I suggest is to load the leaf and fruit sum of the water content. I'm gonna tell you later why. So we're gonna load this EWT leaf fruits dot BSQ also in there. And now the software allows us to like directly make a like a quick and easy um, scatter plot to compare it. So in the tools you have a scatter plot and you open that one. Then you select the data. X would be our, uh, yeah, in C, in our in situ data. And Y would be our index. And we can add a fitted line to, uh, to it and calculate it. So this would be our first result with an R square of 0 0.61 for, for the NWI index. Then I, well, it's already quite, quite a good relationship. Maybe not the best. And I compare it to the PWI as well, and we got a negative relationship. And that's why, so we got two indices calculated. I'm gonna switch back to the presentation. So these are narrow band indices, normalized difference and a single um, um, difference index, a single division index. So these index work, uh, here, though we have a reference band in the red edge and one band in the in the second water absorption, which goes up and down with more water in there, and that's what it reacts to. And the other index does the same for the first water absorption, where uh, where that one reacts to. So we got our first result, but we have other, maybe more suitable methods to estimate water quantum. So now we're gonna use the integral approach uh, with another tool we have in there. I'm gonna open it in a second. I'm, I'm gonna explain it quickly. So what the tool does is creating a convex hull over every spectrum in the image which serves like an, as an envelope over, over the spectrum. And so you can separate this single, like more distinct absorption, like here the carotenoid absorption or the chlorophyll absorption and the water absorption. And it also implements the green peak because if we only uh, calculate the convex hull, we wouldn't have that um, green peak um, yeah, re reflected in, in there. So also has a peak detection algorithm in there that detects the green peak to separate those. And what happens then, then where there's a logarithmic uh, transformation happening with the spectrum. So it's not a reflecting act anymore, but it's log one divided by the reflectance. So we have a, yeah, a, a, a a broader range of values to calculate uh, in an index later. Then we're gonna re remove the continuum from the spectrum. So we divide it by the, by the convex hull. And internally it would look like this. So we have a carotenoid absorption area and a chlorophyll absorption area and the water absorption area and it will calculate the ratio between 
this area and the surrounding area. And that's the actual ratio it's, which is going to be calculated. The reason why it's blue here is that I, 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 yeah, I detected that if you include the continuum in the water retrieval, it works better uh, than if you not, uh, don't include it because of the, the strong LAI influence in that region. So we're going to do that. We're going to go back to the NMAP box. Going to close this relationship. We got our data. We have the applications, ap agricultural applications, and the ASI tool. Again, we lo load our input data set. I'm going to copy the path quickly so it's faster. Spectra. And the average one. Then we assign an output image again. Then we put it to retrievals and call it ASI easily. And now uh, this option here, find and plot, uh, it allows us to give an example. Here, uh, also the axes are missing. I'm sorry for that. But this first option here gives, uh, gives us an example spectrum, which has an NDVI higher than 0.85. So it detects like a vegetation spectrum to give you an idea about what is happening here. So as I said, there's the green peak is considered, it separates carotenoid from chlorophyll and oops I got a crash right now too it's perfect for demonstration <laughs> so yeah the, the actual word version is a bit of a problem I got a crash <laughs> it's always when you present something it happens I'm going to restart it quite fast If it didn't crash for you, it's, it's, it's fine. But I actually know why it crashes, so no, no worries. <laughs> it's gonna be resolved. So here we are again, the MF box. I'm gonna hurry a bit. All right, so and the option what we are interested in uh, here right now is uh, save a three band carotenoid chlorophyll and liquid water absorption image. But that's the option I showed you in the slides that um, retrieves all of those uh, um, variables uh, simultaneously. So you can also assign um, um, a yeah, uh, uh, absorption range you are interested in by your own by setting those uh, ranges here and calculate an index. But we are gonna do this special option here right now. And we're also gonna save a, a continuum removed ra a raster to make it more visible what happened. So we're gonna run this. All right. There we go. There's my NMAP box. There it is. I'm going to load it into the NMAP box. It crashed, so I have to load it again. All right. 
so we're gonna look at this image the ASI 3 band car cup H2O image that is what came out of the special option and it looks quite colorful because we have a three band image there so the now the stretching is a bit extreme because we only have vegetation spectra but uh, it gives you an idea anyway because like for example here in the mid mid season if we compare it to the spectra again There we are. Yeah, and um, we got much higher water contents uh, before uh, senescence emerges. So it turns more into a blue dominant color. And in the beginning of the year, it's more a uh, yellowish color because uh, the water content is not that high. Maybe the soil also has uh, influence. And it's more yellowish because of the mix between yeah, red and, and green and so on. So that gives us idea and we can also yeah, validate the single bands. We're going to do that again with this scatter plot tool. We're going to load our ASI image and our in situ data again. And we want to compare this third band, the uh, H2O water content band with our in situ data. So we got this relation calculated of 0 0.68, which is already yeah, quite much better than the than the index. The, yeah, it's it's what we have here as a result is still an index, but it's based on, on an integral, so much more bands are being included. And it's only bands that are sensitive to water, mostly. Of course, there are other influencers as, to, uh, as well. All right. It's almost 11 again, so we're going to do the last um, method two. So we tried this one and our last uh, option is a physical based tool, which is, uh, is uh, particularly designed to retrieve water content from the 970 water absorption band. So this is uh, this first water absorption band in a normal measured spectrum. And what the, the, what the approach does actually is we, it's some kind of a transformed uh, beer lambert law, which allows us to inversely um, yeah, get the, the, the thickness of the optically active water layer out there. So in the beginning, beginning it's zero. And we, if we slowly increase this value um, using the water absorption coefficients for pure liquid water, it, 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 close, uh, it slowly closes this water absorption. And we have this gray line here, which is the assumed dry state of ve vegetation. And when it uh, hits this point where the, the residuals are minimal, it's gonna yeah, save this value as the water content value, which is then like a, a inversion of the beer lambert law Oops, that was too fast. We're gonna do this quickly. So there we are. And we go back again to the end map box. We're gonna select the plant water retrieval tool. Doesn't look spectacular, but the algorithm in the back is yeah, might be more spectacular actually. <laughs> so we're gonna load the data again. Our average spectral data, we're gonna assign an output retrievals PVR. 
we can also assign a NDVI threshold if you're not interested that the algorithm algorithm runs over the uh, bare soil pixels, for example. And we have to assign an output no data value, and we don't divide the input data, and it runs quite quick over that small data set. And we have that saved. We edit to our raster collection. And we look at the results quickly. Again, our input data. And our model data. And there's the result, and we improve the result a bit even more. So now it's a R square of 0 0.72. So, so now the reason why we choose the leaf and fruit sum of our measurements is actually that in in yeah in in wheat spectra the the ears of the of the wheat is are very very present in in the in the spectrum of course because the spectrum it meter sees them and measures them as well and the water inside the ears absorbs too and yeah makes up the the water absorption bands too and so if we only use the leaf water content we would overestimate the water content because it's it's in the spectrum, uh, but it's not in the data we measured. So we can yeah, we can quickly do that as well. So we got our variables measured, and we only take the leaf measurements. EWT leaf. and compare it to our, our model. So that's uh, what would happen. So we have a quite good uh, relationship for the, for, yeah, not perfect. Now uh, the line is being pulled up by those outliers. Um, but the line before was here. And we got those points here, which are all spectra that have a large amount of, of, uh, of ear content. So if we, yeah, we consider the ear content in the leaf water, uh, in the canopy water content measurements, we get a much better relationship in this case. All right, this was an example of some of our applications. Sorry for some crashes, it's still in development and we are trying to do, uh, yeah, to improve it furthermore. So it's 11, I guess we are done and I hope you will use it. I, I have a future. question. Yeah.